Hello and welcome. My name is Raj Basord. I'm a consultant psychiatrist based in London. And this is Head Starters, where I'm talking to various young psychiatrists all over the country about what it's like to choose psychiatry as a career. And joining me now are Dave and Amanda. And what I want to put to them is a common perception amongst medical students and doctors, which may explain why psychiatry is not the most popular specialty at medical school. And this has been referred to as a bit of a recruitment crisis in psychiatry at the moment, because it seems to be difficult uh, for people at medical school to consider and choose psychiatry. And I want to put forward an argument, which I'm not sure Dave and Amanda are going to agree with, which is that's partly because the reason why many people choose medicine is they watch a TV program like ER and they see dramatically exciting events where people are brought in to casualty or accident in emergency who are very ill and uh, doctors and nurses jump up and down on these people's chests and bring them back from the dead and it's very dramatic and very exciting. And I think medicine therefore attracts a group of people who are problem solvers and are really interested in quite exciting, high stakes, dangerous, medically dangerous situations where they can do good and do good rapidly. And maybe psychiatry doesn't appeal because it seems as though if you are doing any good it takes quite a long time. But I, I think psychiatry has equally dramatic, equally high stakes situations with equal frequency. For example, I had a patient I was talking to just a short while ago, and I'll disguise the details to protect their confidentiality, a woman who was describing feeling quite suicidal, and as I spoke to her and got more history, it looked like she'd been even more suicidal a short time previously, and then she mentioned quite casually playing with a gun and thinking about doing away with herself with that gun, and, and re what had happened was um, she'd been in another country recently where guns were a lot more legal uh, than they are here in the UK. So that felt like quite a dramatic high stakes situation where I had to make a decision about how dangerous this situation was for her. Um, but um, Amanda and Dave, what, what are your thoughts um, about this particular predicament? Hmm, I think there's a couple of things. Firstly, I'm not entirely sure that people choose a career in medicine entirely because it's perceived to be kind of quite dramatic because otherwise there probably wouldn't be such a recruitment crisis in emergency medicine either but also I do think as you say there are um, times in psychiatry where you do have to make quite significant decisions to do with patient care and also you know the care of the wider um, public as well sometimes um, and that is an exciting time and it is a high stakes situation and also there are other slightly different times which are equally exciting and you can see what you're doing is quite having quite a dramatic positive effect which again is the other element I suppose of um, medicine that is perceived to be quite enjoyable and um, quite satisfying. Maybe I'm not choosing my words correctly. Maybe intensity is a better word. Mm. A lot of people come into medicine because they feel it's going to be pretty intense. And, mm. and, and drama series like ER on television certainly convey that impression. But what, what are your thoughts, Dave, about, about this? Psychiatry for me, full stop, is it, it has excitement and drama across the board. I, I can think of countless examples of where someone's either been self-harming in front of you and you think, oh my god, what, what do I do? Your heart's beating 100 miles per hour and you ask for help in that situation, but equally all the way down to people that you meet whilst on call who, who could be, shall we say, perceived as being dangerous and there's police involved. I starkly remember when I was doing a forensics placement, there was this huge beam off of a man who had recently murdered someone and, and also had um, what were psychotic symptoms which led him to that. And I remember my heart pounding in my chest whilst these burly police officers all lined up making sure that this chap was okay and he went for me 
and I, I, I was so scared but it was amazing once I got over that once I got over that shock it, it, going into and actually trying to understand what it was like for this young lad how he was going through what sounded like hell and how not only could I help him with this situation yes in the long term but I equally had to manage his acute distress there and then and yeah I'd say that's incredibly exciting what about this idea of people going through hell which you've, you've put very well um, is there a, there's a sense in which in, in the rest of medicine you are with people as they're going through hell it's a different kind of hell though to, to what's happening in psychiatry is there a sense in which the hell that people are going through in psychiatry somehow um, there's something about that, that that makes it difficult for people to choose to, to be uh, engaged with that? I think there's a lot of lack of understanding not only within should we say the wider public but even within medicine of what psychiatry is about. Like I actually do teach um, undergrads and try to um, get them to understand what it's like to be a psychiatrist and actually there are a load of similarities between different areas of medicine and psychiatry but it, it, it's that stigma I think as much as anything else that lack of understanding of what psychiatry really is about which which does make a difference for undergrads and I think also oh, I think it's also a lot easier to understand something if you can see what it is that you're trying to Definitely. understand rather than having to kind of work that out through the, building a therapeutic relationship with someone and um, developing an empathy with them and an empathy with their situation because actually that can be difficult for the for the treating person, for the doctor. Um, doing that, trying to understand what somebody is going through because it's often, you know, very, a lot of very strong emotions going on and you're going to be almost a part of that mm. and that's a real privilege but it can also have a toll on you as a doctor as well so I think it, there is a slight difference both as you say Dave to do with the um, stigma around mental illness and also not being able to exactly see what's going on. But it is also amazing to see the medical students over the course of their time with us actually say, you know what, I, my eyes have been opened, I really quite enjoy this. It, I, I think doctors on the whole do like to pathologise and actually say, ah, this part of the body isn't working or that part of the brain isn't working, whereas it, you're right, in psychiatry you just don't get to do that but you do see that manifest in other ways such as the distress that you see patients go through and I suppose in that is something that captured me and enticed me into psychiatry because you don't necessarily have to have a pathology right there in front of you that you can cut off or treat with a I don't know a, a specific injection or something it is something that I find really quite captivating about psychiatry. And actually, in lots of specialties, in lots of medical specialties, there's plenty of people that actually don't fit into strict diagnostic yeah. criteria and actually they don't fit that medical model. And I guess in psychiatry, we, because we're used to that, we can address that quite um hopefully <laughs> effectively um, whereas actually a lot of patients that present to other specialties with those sorts of problems where they don't fit that actually can be very difficult for a patient not feeling understood or not feeling that they kind of fit in and also for doctors treating them that's really hard when you expect a patient should have this treatment and then get better and they don't that that mm -hmm. can be difficult but I think there's a lot of um, there are, coming back to what you were saying, there are a lot of high intensity moments in that and there, yeah. there is the opportunity to work out what's going on with somebody that's not lacking, it's just that it's not as clear cut I guess. Yeah.
Well, well, you're both emphasizing one aspect of psychiatry, which is the kind of understanding bit, understanding what's happening, and the fact that in the rest of medicine, the understanding uh, may be a little bit more obvious. It may be quite complicated in terms of the science or the physiology involved, but somehow it feels better laid out. In other words, when someone comes in, let's say, with diabetes, mm. um, doctors feel in a better place to, 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 to get a handle on what's going on and understanding of what's going on and then moving on to treatment. The, the, the thing that's really interesting in our conversations is I tend to move on to the action bit because I think that one of the reasons why people don't get psychiatry is they think there is no action. They think, they think that psychiatrists can't really do much about mm. what they see, whereas I disagree very strongly with that. I think, I think psychiatry can be extremely powerful um, in the face of uh, human distress. But before we get into that bit, let's just stick with the understanding. It does seem as though, as Amanda's saying, that the understanding is a bit more tricky. I mean, people do things that are inexplicable, um, and we've all discussed some examples already. Um, you can develop an understanding of it, but there is a sense in which there is still an inexplicability bit of it, which I find fascinating and engages me, but maybe put, puts young doctors off. I don't know what either of you think. I, I guess it depends on what your experience of that has been and how you've seen psychiatry like during medical school, whether that is, because that could be perceived in a positive light or a negative light because it does present an additional kind of challenge, but actually most people have gone into medicine because it is challenging. So I don't see that that's necessarily a negative thing. Dave, what about you? Well, I'm I'm just contemplating it. If I'm if if I think of other specialties as well, I mean, you, you can see I I couldn't imagine myself being a dermatologist, for example, sort of sitting there looking at rashes all day. I mean, that <laughs> is quite mundane in my eyes. I mean, psychiatry in that respect offers a huge amount of variety, not only in terms of the type of people that you see, but equally the sort of challenges you face because it isn't just about diagnosis it's about the ethics the legal aspects of it I mean all of this I think is quite exciting I, I love that interplay because everyone's story no matter how similar it could seem on the face of it does play out in different ways because of all those different aspects okay but here's the thing I mean I, I found it very exciting I, I was giving a talk in Birmingham a few weeks ago and a psychiatrist um, came up to me and we were discussing again this issue about why people aren't choosing psychiatry and he said something a little bit um, perhaps uh, condemnatory about the rest of medical school <laughs> but he said psychiatry was the bit of medical school that made me think that the rest of it didn't make him think um, and I thought that was quite an interesting uh, comment but if all three of us find it exciting why is it most medical students don't seem to find it exciting in the same way? Well. There is a perception that actually the psychiatrists are just the people that sort of see patients once a week, say, okay, nothing much has changed, not going to do anything, I'll see you next week, and just leave it at that. And Again, it is about a lack of understanding. I, I, I fundamentally believe that. I think also it's to do with what you're exposed to. If you think of the most high-intensity times that you've had, when I think about that, I think lots of times when I've been on call or where there hasn't been, you know, as much um, kind of support and things um, around where I've put myself into situate or where I've been placed into situations where I've had to take on more responsibility or had to see pe people and the stakes were a little bit higher. And I guess as a medical student, you don't get exposed to that because a lot of that is when you're on call. Mm. And medical students don't necessarily have that experience as part of their training. And so I wonder if actually we're not showing psychiatry to its true extent and to students just because of the way we teach it. I, I think the, the shape of psychiatry or training undergrads in psychiatry is also changing as well because we actually do offer special interest half days and I know our medical students go down to our local medium secure unit and they see some really quite dangerous people that they find quite daunting having to go through these massive locked 
outdoors and then meeting these really quite dangerous people and they find that really exciting um, and we also offer other placements and, and they, they do like it they do really enjoy it but I want to I focus on another aspect, which is the scariness of medicine. A lot of medicine is pretty scary, particularly when you're studying it or involved in it for the first time. People come in and they, they're nearly dead or they're very seriously ill if you're in casualty or other parts of medicine, or they, they literally are, if they've had a cardiac arrest, are dead. And it's very scary in terms of confronting um, you know, ultimate, ultimate things, uh, ultimately bad things that can happen to people. Um, and um, I, I was I always found it amazing, particularly when I just qualified. I did cardiology um, when I just uh, qualified, and um, the confidence of the cardiac registrar and senior registrar was just absolutely stunning in the face of really dramatic events all around them. How calm they remained and relaxed <laughs> as they issued instructions and decisions that saved people's lives, and that had a profound effect. But is there a sense in which the scariness that you're confronted with in psychiatry somehow is more scary and that's what puts people off. It's a different type of scary. Um, if you think about someone who, who comes in through A&E, whatever, um, it, it's happening to that person but in psychiatry it, it's not only the individual that could be at risk, it could be anyone around anyone around them as well and that's a different type of scary I think. Hmm. I, I think that it is slightly different but for um, kind of different reasons hmm. to that I think that it's in the cardiology example that you gave it probably seems like quite a scary situation but actually it doesn't feel scary to a cardiologist who knows what to do and feels in control to some degree. They're not really in control of whether somebody lives or dies but they are in control of the part that they can play in that and I guess sometimes in psychiatry the <laughs> scary elements actually you don't feel like you've got as much control. For example if somebody is leaving the hospital saying they're going to harm themselves um, then you feel then that can make you feel quite out of control actually and that can be quite scary and more frightening than in a situation where you feel that you are able to um, to follow whatever protocol you're used to following and have that sort of sense of control in that way. I definitely agree. Hmm. But I, I think that, that psychiatrists do have um, what, what, well, 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 practice psychiatry. Um, people who know what they're doing and mm. um, are um, able to practice as they'd like to practice um, can have an enormous impact, just as a cardiologist can have an enormous impact. Mm. Um, so there's still something going awry here in that medical students, in particular, don't seem to see that impact. Mm. Maybe it's less obvious to them. Maybe it's more obvious when someone jumps up and down on someone's chest and you bring them back from the dead that control has been exerted. Maybe the length of time that medical students are attached to psychiatry doesn't give them long enough no. to see that, that psychiatry does have an impact. Well-practiced psychiatry, that is. Because, of course, as Amanda knows from previous broadcasts, I have a bugbear about how, how well psychiatry is allowed to be practiced in, in certain sections of the health service. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think also sometimes in it depends where you're working. You don't always get to follow people up like you would in cardiology while someone is remaining on a ward. If somebody has come in suicidal, they leave not suicidal, that's a pretty impressive thing to have, you know, created. And then they go away and then they, you know, don't harm themselves when that was something that they were thinking about. That's that is quite a dramatic turnaround but actually you never know, you never know what happens after they've left the hospital well sometimes you do but often medical students won't know um, what happens after the person has left the hospital and so actually you don't really get to see the outcome of the intervention that, that you've um, created just in that 
hour or whatever spent talking to somebody in A and E. I wonder why medical students don't get that flavour though, because they're attached for a reasonable length of time, and they do see some continuity through, you know, in attending ward rounds and what have you. Hmm. I get. I don't know. I think part of it is the setting that you will see the most dramatic changes in, and the fact that people, if they're better then they're at home and you won't necessarily know that they're better because of that because a lot of medical students will be I guess on inpatient wards with really the very severest ill yeah. people yeah. and actually I think that doesn't give a true reflection of psychiatry as a whole and actually how useful brief interventions can be. But I suppose you'd probably see that in other specialties as well you know who medical students attach for only a set length of time so they only see a certain amount of the most extreme cases because they just attend ward rounds. Mm. I think the excitement aspect is only a, a tiny proportion to be frank about why medical students don't choose psychiatry. Mm. I, mm. I honestly do believe that <laughs> most junior doctors like Raj says, want to be able to sort of physically see something or have something tangible that they can hold on to and say, that's that and I did this. Mm. And that's what made the difference. I bet you if we had scanners that we could just put people in and say, aha, it's the anterior cingulate that's not working, let's go and give them this medication, then actually we'd probably have a lot more medical mm. students coming to us. But it's those... I suppose bringing people into it, she say, look, we are still using the same skills of talking to people, making diagnos uh, diagnoses based on set criteria. We are still treating in a, well, it's more than just a medical way, it's a, a psychosocial way as well. So we do have accepted treatments that are effective and just as effective as the rest of medicine. And that excitement factor, I've got to be honest, I think, is in psychiatry and it's in a lot of other specialties as well. Hmm. Well, we're running out of time a little bit, so um, we have to think about some concluding comments. But I was seeing a patient actually earlier on today, and again, I have to disguise the details of confidentiality. And at the beginning of the consultation, they were feeling very, very negative and had really come to the conclusion they made a series of disastrous decisions and their life was kind of like over. Um, and so they were very, very low indeed. And it was a little bit of a crisis type consultation. Um, the consultation went on for quite a long time with a lot of um, back and forth in a very lively sense because they were clinging on to their views, which led to a very negative outlook. And by the end of the consultation, though, through um, some of the disputational methods that you'll both be familiar with, they had begun to change their point of view and definitely were more hopeful and possibly a bit more cheerful. Now to me that is quite a dramatic change that's occurred in quite a short period of time and again the thing I find odd is that a novelist or if that was in a play or um, in a soap opera of some description that would be seen as quite dramatic actually um, and yet somehow it's not the kind of drama that seems to engage medical students. I, I, I don't know. I don't know whether it's a exposure problem, whether people, medical students, just aren't exposed to that sufficiently, or whether it actually we're just barking up the wrong tree, really, in terms of whether medical students are looking for drama from their from their medical careers, or whether there are other other things that are preventing them from wanting to do psychiatry. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think um, perhaps the drama side of things is a bit of a red herring. I uh, don't know many of my colleagues who work in lots of different specialties say I chose to be a, a endocrinologist because I loved the drama of diabetes or whatever it may be. Um, 
A and E, like Amanda said, is having a massive recruitment uh, drive failure at the moment. And where is the most exciting place to work in the hospital? I th I don't think you can argue much more exciting than any emergency department. But I I do also think that partly it might be that we're not giving medical students a well-rounded enough impression of what we do and showing because I'm I'm just thinking one of the most dramatic changes I saw in someone I was speaking to him he was a person that was on the medical ward um, unable to walk or speak and they couldn't find a kind of organic cause for that so they couldn't find a medical reason for that and they thought it might be um, kind of psychologically generated and we went and we spoke about his history etc and then by the end of the consultation he was no longer need he had initially started writing his responses rather than um, verbalizing them because he wasn't able to speak he'd started being able to speak again and was able to um, kind of make his way back to his bed independently which to be honest I wasn't expecting yeah. and um, but it was amazing it was absolutely amazing but I, I just don't think that medical students get exposed to those sorts of experiences and where they do see these dramatic changes like the one that you're describing Raj they don't actually see the ongoing outcome of that because that person will go home and they won't see that person again and we won't be able to give them feedback on so maybe we should say to them oh that person we, that you saw in clinic last week this is what's going on with them but I don't so, know. So maybe I think you're making an important point maybe um, it, transformation is important in medicine people come in very ill they're transformed through medical mm. intervention and that seeing that transformation is important to doctors um, and transformation happens in psychiatry but it's just sometimes a bit more difficult to see although it's there. And it can be incredibly powerful in psychiatry how you can see someone who's so debilitated to actually leading full independent lives. It is it, and I, powerful I think is, is the right word and psychiatry has that in spades. So we're, we're, we're out of time really. Thank you both very much indeed for uh, talking to me. I think you've, you've made an important point Dave about casualty being the most exciting place to be yet actually they're facing recruitment crisis but that's maybe about working conditions and maybe that's something we can talk about in another episode of Head Starters which is the working conditions under which doctors practice and perhaps psychiatrists um, uh, in impacting on um, uh, how it's perceived and, and the way it's worked but thank you both very much indeed for talking to me this evening and I hope very very much to do another episode of Head Starters with you both very shortly thank you Thanks very much. Thank you.